Well, this time Lance looked like he was sleeping soundly, and, and he was indeed. Uh, and so uh, before long, Violet and Elaine, they both also went to bed, even though it was a little early. Now Elaine, when she, uh, before she turned the light off, she read a little bit. And I think I m might have told you she discovered Tennyson, and she was reading Idols of the King. Now here's my copy of Idols of the King. I like to think this is a copy that, that she had. I've had this for 60 years, I think. I, I got it in high school. Uh, and anyway, she was just starting it, really. She'd gotten to the end of the first chapter, I think it is, called The Coming of Arthur. And uh, she was reading these words right at the end. Now remember, a couple things to remember about Elaine. She had that idiot savant uh, syndrome, and reading for her was a different experience. I mean, it was very intense, and she tended to memorize at the same time that she read, and she read slowly. And right at the end, she was reading this. I like the idea that I'm reading something that I first read 60 years ago. And Arthur and his knighthood for a space were all one will, and through that strength the king drew in the petty princedoms under him, fought, and in twelve great battles overcame the heathen hordes, and made a realm, and reigned. Then she saw the next, the next one coming up was Gareth and Lynette. Well, anyway, she like she liked to do. She sat there and thought about that for a while. Wouldn't it? She could think that it would be wonderful to have a king. A king that was honorable and re you respected. Not, not a man who would be king. A man who wanted to be king. Not that. But a king who knew that he had to do that because it was the right thing to do. And to live in an age when honor was so important. And she thought along those lines. But then then she uh, turned the light off, and before too long, she went to sleep. Now, the next morning, Lance was the first one to wake up. And he woke up, and he knew right where he was, and he was feeling good. He'd, he'd slept well. The aspirin had helped. Uh, and he, uh, he, he managed to get in a wheelchair without too much trouble, without even too much pain. Went to the bathroom, uh, came back, and still the, the house was quiet, the, the Wessex household. So he phoned, got his phone, and he phoned his father to give an update. And their conversation really wasn't all that long. Uh, he just wanted to assure his father that he was doing well, and he had some amazing healers, these two women. He said, he said there's something about Violet's, Lady Violet's hands. It's just like they can do magic. Uh, and, and I really feel a lot better. So his dad was, was uh, happy. And Dina, his mom, got on her, but not too long. She, she'd settled down. And so that was good. And uh, Lance was about to uh, roll his, see if he could roll his wheelchair. It was pretty hard to do with that right arm not working too well. But it was getting better to see if he could get over to uh, <clears throat> Violet's bookshelves and see what, what kind of books she had on the shelves. But, but before, before he got there, uh, uh, Elaine showed up. Elaine had not slept well that night. She had had an odd dream. Uh, she dreamed that she was a bird, a blackbird, flying over and around King Arthur's court, flying along a river and that went by Camelot. And uh, it just wasn't, it wasn't a pleasant dream. But she, she woke up and when she came out of her bedroom and looked down and there was Lance up and smiling, that, that all went away. And she, she says right away, gee ma, come look, you know. And fortunately, Violet, was already up and, and about ready to come out anyway, and she came out and looked down. And she said, holy moly. Now, i got to tell you something about that. Violet 
she had one of her characteristics is she couldn't bring herself to swear. Uh, she was the opposite of what you hear about swearing like a drunken sailor. She was the opposite of that. She she couldn't do it. She had this whole arsenal of archaic expressions uh, like sugar and euphemisms, a uh, nice way, you know, and it, it, a lot of people found it kind of amusing to hear her use these expressions. Uh, in, in a way, it was her idiolect, just like uh, Tatus had uh, his, his idiolect of saying, oh, honey, sweet. <laughs> But, but anyway, uh, they, they, uh, Lance had already noticed it about her, and, and uh, he, he thought to himself, how different from a Pennsylvania farmer. He knew one that, uh, well, what a Pennsylvania farmer would have said about her is, she wouldn't say shit for a bucket full, which is that kind of crudeness. Now, one thing about, uh, uh, that might explain this about Violet is she was a New Englander. And uh, New England had a Puritan history, and so maybe it was that still somewhat Puritan attitude of the New Englanders. Maybe it was that, or maybe she'd had her mouth washed out with soap a bunch of times when she was young. Whatever the case was, uh, she would do that all the time. But anyway, uh, holy moly, that came because <clears throat> Lance looked so good. So they went down, and you know, they he explained he'd called, and he 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 was really feeling good, and. So uh, I said, well, let's, let's have breakfast. And so in they went. Now, another thing I can tell you about Violet, she's a good cook. And I, not, not the kind that can put on this unbelievable meal that's unforgettable. No, the kind that was consistent, fast, and good. She just was able to come up with good food. Uh, good food, I like to say sometimes. Uh, without a problem. So in no time at all, she had a really good breakfast there, and they made small conversation, and she said to, to Lance, I think you better have have some aspirin here, uh, along with your breakfast. <laughs> and Lance thought, well, now I'm feeling really, I'm really feeling a lot better. And she said, yeah, I know, but I think you better have some aspirin.